Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our show. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed us last okay. time. Um, we are officially the ladies from Eight at the Table and Food, food Wine and Conversation. conversation. So um, I, we see your comments. We see the feedback that you guys are giving us. Keep it coming. We love it. Tune in to Eight at the Table. Thank you for welcoming us to your YouTube community. Like. It is great seeing you guys on there commenting. We see mm -hmm. all the compliments. We appreciate it. Thank you. We're just three ladies trying to have, you know, regular conversation Thanks, about things that we see on the daily on our, you know, current events, things that's happening, different shows that are out here. So we definitely enjoy sharing our thoughts with you guys. And right. we enjoy that you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for food, wine, and conversation. Yep, it's coming soon. Definitely coming, coming. soon. And we're definitely going to come back with more of our feedback and observation from season four. If you have not checked it out, you have to check out season four of Eight at the Table. It's amazing. It's so amazing that we're going back and we're talking about it let's, again. Let's yeah. just talk about, you know, some current events. We've seen what's going on right now. Um, in the media, a lot of um, mental health issues and a lot of yes. the things that are going on. So it's like, we need to kind of go back and really have a conversation about that because that's really important, especially in our communities mm -hmm. where we see a lot of people that are having these issues and it's not really talked about. We can't really recognize the signs, mm -hmm. like, like what is happening? We need to figure out how, you know, what are the signs, first what of all? What are the signs, yeah. And what can we do to um, help someone if we know someone that's going through something? Or mm -hmm. how can we even help ourselves? And how can we realize that we are ourselves going through something Our like that? And we're so, going to be talking about, do we understand the difference between love, love. and trauma bonding? Right. Um, this is a really important discussion. So before we go into that and kind of dig into it, I know you mean you wanted to kind of explain to like, you know, yes. everyone kind of really what is trauma, trauma bonding? bonding? What is trauma bonding? It occurs when the abused person forms an unhealthy bond with the person who abuses them. Yeah, so let's talk about really what does trauma bonding mean, right? Okay, so there's two things that happens in trauma bonding. It's really cyclical, right? So it's a pattern or intermittent. So essentially what you end up having is you have these periods of the individual showing you love, affection, and intimacy, followed by generally a period of abuse. And abuse is different, right? It can be psychological, it could be physical, it could be verbal. And once that period ends, what ends up happening, the person shows you this intense remorse. They're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. You know, I love you. You're my soulmate. Like we're meant to be together. Like you don't understand. I'll do anything you want for me and I'll change. I promise, right? Mm -hmm. And essentially what happens to us as people, we believe it, right? Because... In the beginning, the person didn't show you that side of um, them, You know, right? it's certain symptoms you're not going to see that yes. someone has some mental issues. Because I didn't see it when my yeah, ex had it until that. like a year in, and I was just like, um, what's going on? Right? Because if, if, you, if you meet someone and they show you only their awfulness, nine times out of ten, you're not going to stay. You know, you're, you're not necessarily a masochist. I like it. You might like it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> yes, but most people aren't masochists where they're like, okay, please abuse me. Most people are like, okay, um, oh my God, I met this person. He's perfect. He's wonderful. And you fall for that person, right? They show you the best sides of them. And then you quote unquote fall in love with them. So when you fall in love with them, you're like, great. You believe in them. So there's game in the beginning. It's game in game. the beginning, right? It's running game. It is running game, but you do have to understand that that person has their own stuff, right? Like, I, I, I don't think, for them, they think they're running game. That's just how they are. They're not like, I'm running game on her and I'm going to show her my abuse real quick. I think That's they, not what it is. They it's, might really think that they love you, too. Of course they think yes. they love, love you. you. Yeah. Of course, in their mind, their perception and the ideology of love it, it is that, right? But it, it, it's not based in, in reality. And really, what we're talking about today specifically, we're talking about 
the difference between actual love Compared and trauma, trauma bonding. Trauma bonding. Mm -hmm. And I think like we're going to talk about trauma bonding and all that it means, but I think like to just circle real quick like what is love? And I think part of the thing is we have to think about how do we define love? Okay, and I think we talked about this last week. What is love to me might not be necessarily what's love to love you. To somebody else. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't believe that's true. Love but is love. Is, okay, love is love. But let's say me. No, that's not love. <laughs> that's not love. Okay, that's not love. But, you know, I'm just saying everyone defines love differently. And I think that, you know, we need to know that everyone's definition of love is totally different. Okay? So this is what, um, what is it called? Trauma bonding means to me. Right, right. And this is how I would define it to someone that does not really understand what you said. Okay. So my thing is, being in a relationship with a guy, you know, is like so like extreme and he loves me so much and then next week something happens he doesn't like what i did and it's like bitch what the fuck you that's not love that? okay it's mm. not love this is trauma bonding but i see you it love as it? Uh, no but i see it as oh he's protecting me mm. oh he sees this as you know he's taking you know i'm wearing this outfit he doesn't like him he doesn't like it like it so he's like why why are you wearing that? Take that shit off. Mm. We're gonna go to this party and I don't want to at you and blah blah blah. To Dude, me, to it's, like, it's like, oh my oh, god, he, cares. he, cares. Oh my he god. loves me. Hashtag no. That's okay, all. <laughs> no, but you know, to me, it's like, oh my god, he might he actually cares about me. And now I see this as his way of expressing love, and it's just an extreme way of him doing it. So you know, compared to him saying, oh, babe, that outfit, I don't know, I'll be like, but I like it. So I'm going to just wear it. He'll be like, okay, if you like it, I love it. To me, that's love. That's not love. And it's No, not I'm it. just saying. The, the, <laughs> no, the, to you, I get the, it. The, the, no, to her, I, that's love. I'm saying I have realized that that is not love. Right. But, you know, when you are in that situation, you see that as love. Right. And I get that. I get that you see that as love. And the thing is, like, okay, here's the problem that you end up having an issue with. Okay. Let me tell you why you have an issue with trauma bonding that uh, somebody had to hold, have a whole term about it, is that it creates a problematic situation. Yes. If, it's, if you actually felt loved all the time, it wouldn't be problematic. You would be like, oh my God, I'm loved all the time. No, but you don't. Because what ends up happening is something happens that creates a problematic situation. Something escalates. Somebody takes it too far. Somebody... The thing, what happens with trauma bonding is that you forget is that the person devalues you, demoralizes you, brings you down, say mm -hmm. you ain't good, you're disgusting, you are whore. Like, yes. those things happen. So, like, those things don't align with making you feel good mm -hmm. about yourself. No, and mm -hmm. I get that, but the thing is that we have to realize that to everyone out there, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Because you telling me your way, I'm going to be like, he love me. He loves me. You know what I'm saying? But you have to realize that on your own, because I think I've been in this situation, y'all. <laughs> I think so. And it's like, at some point, you actually like it. Mm. It's like, you enjoy that. Like, you enjoy being in a situation where someone is like, oh, we, we having this fight, and we going back and forth, and it's like, I hate you, and you know, you hate him, and then the next moment, it's like extreme, like, to you, love, which is not love. But it's just an extreme, like, you know, what is it called? Bonding mm. thing. And, yeah. you know, you might not see it like that. And and I think it takes time to realize that you're in that situation. Right. Because yeah. you enjoy it so much. Because maybe you yourself are toxic. I don't but, but know I, if I it's toxic, but go ahead. My Mimi. thing is, I think these kind of situations, I think both parties have some kind of, trauma childhood trauma or whatever trauma they had right that you know they feel like you know they could abuse you or you like okay yeah i like this abuse right right it's some kind of trauma you guys probably went through mm -hmm. or but dealt with mm -hmm. yeah. didn't get help like yeah. it, 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 i but think do that's what think, it is you mean do you think that you uh, like this is my thing i think that at some point you yourself have to realize that you went through some sort of trauma right. in order to be able to fix this trauma. Right. But if you didn't get help for that first trauma, how are you going to know? 
I know, but it takes time. I'm saying we could still learn. I think that, you it's know, I, yeah, I think happen. that you get to a point where it's like, damn, I'm really in this situation and I either need to realize that it's unhealthy, mm -hmm. realize that I need to get out of it because mm -hmm. the consequences could be tragic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. help myself right. or get help mm -hmm. from someone else. I think that's exactly what you mean. I think it takes for the person to get to that point. It's very hard to get to that point because yeah. It's but like, when do you get to that point? Like we we. Like I think. I I think you need help to get to that point because yeah. sometimes a lot of people, it's too late. No, I don't ever believe it's too late. I feel like there's always the opportunity. Every sixty second, you can turn things around. Like, and I know, like, I'm the oh, eternal yeah. optimistic, <laughs> or it might be sound poetic, but I do believe that. Like, I, I truly do because it's shown in my own life. So, regardless whether it's me being optimistic, I've experienced it. So, my thing is like that the person does have to get to that point, right? But it's like real complex because it's not that easy because you got to think about like a person like, okay, what kind of relationships do you have around you? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Like if everybody has the same relationship that I have with my man, then I'm going to be like, dude, this is like, this is normal, right? Mm -hmm. But I promise you, if you go around a different situation, you're like, oh, this is what we do? Like, that's what y'all doing? Like, then you're like, okay, cool. Like, I feel like exactly when you know better, you do better. Like, I was in a situation for years, and I felt like, to me, that was like, oh my God, this is the love of my life, and we're gonna be together forever, and it was great. But then, like, I think I got to a point where I had to find different types of relationships where I valued those relationships more than I value that. Mm. Because those relationships brought me growth, um, actually made me feel more secure about myself, more confident. And I just felt like, damn, these type of relationships are making me feel a, a bigger high than this relationship. Mm. And then, because to be honest, yeah. this is like, I'm like, every time that the argument happened, yeah. and then you have the makeup, yeah. it's like, oh my God, the this is, is so nice good, this is so good. Right. And it's like, oh my God, I'm high, everything is happening at this, it's like a high. It's right, like right, really right, right. an adrenaline rush. So it's like, okay, this situation always brought me this, and the high was like, it happened all the time. Every two weeks, every three weeks, we had that fight and we had that makeup. Right. And now I have these relationships that, and they're not necessarily. Um, it's not a high. It's but not like a, uh, what is it called, sexual or no, like that. They're regular. just like emotional friendships, and these type of relationships actually bring me the same type of high. And actually, now because I don't have the lows of when we're arguing and we're having that those lows are not happening, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it's like a constant high. So those highs were more important to me than this high. So right. now I realize to myself, it's like, damn, that's not enough. I right. want this high, I'd rather mm -hmm. have this high. So I think that it's like, we don't see it. Like we see people all the time and be like, oh, she's stupid because she in that situation. But I get what you're saying. She doesn't have those relationships have the, that yeah, bring you that the same you. adrenaline rush right. that that relationship brought mm -hmm. you. So right. it's like, I completely agree with that. Right. It's like, okay, now what relationships do you have? Yeah. And the thing is that, damn, you curse me out, and you're just like, oh, you stupid, you this, you that, but then at the same time, a day later, you're like, oh my God, I love you, you're the best, you're the most, most beautiful person ever, right. and it's like, huh. But then I'm here, and I'm getting the rush all the time, and I'm constantly going high, 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 right. and it's like, damn. I'd rather have this than this. Than that. And that's exactly what I'm talking about because what happens is like we, like believe it or not, people get addicted to stress. People get addicted to toxic situations. Yeah. Like whether you want to believe it or not, what happens is when you in a toxic situation where you fighting, whatever, like your body, your brain is creating a space. And what happens, you do that long enough your body starts to crave it. Crave your body's it. Mm -hmm. like, okay, when's my next high? Mm -hmm. Like I will subconsciously create a situation to get my fix. And people don't understand that we can get addicted to toxic stress. I did that all the time. I'd be like, we're right? we gonna fight today. And you could do it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, know what I'm you create it like, oh, um, who, who's that? Yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying? And you create the situation because you think you're, you think you're in control, but you're not. Your body needs it because things occur, chemical reactions occur in your body and it's feeding it. But what ends up happening is it's not healthy. Yeah. It's not sustainable. And well, I think, 
that we judge people all the time all because the it's like, yeah. like, damn, you don't see that he treating you that way or this, but it's like, you gotta under, like, you know, I, I, and I had this conversation with you, Marie, before about drugs, right? right. It's like, I tell you, how is it that one person can use a drug mm -hmm. and not get addicted, and how does another person use it and get addicted? Get addicted. Right, it's right. like, you know, and, I, and I'm like, damn, how can you be in a situation, and we see it here, and we're on the outside, right, and right, we're right. like, yo, that, she's stupid. Right. Why is she letting him treat her like that and whatever? But it's not, she's addicted to that. Right, but or he I, him because that him, might happen to guy too. Yeah. Right, but like I like before we go into it, that I think that's why I feel like I always approach everybody with compassion and try to approach it with understanding is because we're the sum of our experiences, right? And so you got to take into consideration everything, right? So I think what ends up happening is that we forget, we think everybody grew up like we grew up, and so if we think everybody grew up the way we grew up, we're like why can't she just leave him? <laughs> it's not that easy. You yes. know what I'm saying? So if our parents are the first person or our caregivers are the first person that shows us how to love, how to trust, how to show intimacy, all these things, right? And we all know not everybody has the same parents. Not everybody has the same upbringing, right? And so when you get into adulthood and you get into your relationships, it's going to be different. People are going to have different needs. Like, we've all been in the situation where we see our homegirl and we're like, are you really going to let that happen? happen? Quietly in our brain? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Like, you've been in the situation. <laughs> like, I can not Yo, I promise you I've been in the situation, like, way back. And I'm just like, damn, you going to let this dude talk to you this way? Quietly, because we were young. But, yeah, that's going to happen. And... Now, being the person that I am now, I'm going to fall back because that's yeah. really up to the person okay. to get to the point that you were saying. Yeah, yeah. and I think that that's, you're never going to get to that point unless you realize it. But the thing is, like, also, it's, we got we to gotta understand that you have to get to that point. And if you feel like it's getting out of hand, you need to get help. Right. Just because, let's be honest, sometimes you feel like, oh, my God, I'm never going to get out of this. Mm. And sometimes you do need to reach out to someone so they can, you know, it might be a professional, Facts. it might be a yeah. friend, but it could lead to, let, let's go back, another vocabulary word, feminicide, mm -hmm. okay, this is when we have men killing women, which is happening all over the world, Right. okay, mm -hmm. and we don't hear that much about yeah. it, so usually what happens is the men ends up killing the woman mm -hmm. because of it could be anything. It could be something minor. It could be being in a toxic relationship, toxic relationship. and you get into the mm -hmm. argument about an outfit. Right. And we don't hear about it so <laughs> it's much. Funny. It's not. But, you know, you hear, we don't hear about it so much in the U.S., but all over the world it's happening. Right. And it's like we have some countries where you have at least one a day. How do we get people to be comfortable to talk about their problems? Right. Like, let's say our friends. Let's say we have friends. that they're, they're going through something. How do we get them comfortable to be like, okay, like, we see you, you we see you going through something. Right. Like, how do we approach them? Like, let's let's talk. I agree with you. And like, I how? Think... Like, not you want to be in their business. No, but I but think. But how do you approach them? Like, It comes girl, from. We need to talk. Yeah. Look, it comes from a place of being really non-judgmental. And when I say it, I'm not just talking about, I mean, I mean it. Like, if you're not ready to approach that friend and say, like, look, respectfully, I respect your boundaries. However, I see you're unhappy, right? Because I think what we forget is that people are very protective of their ego. Mm -hmm. And so what's going to end up happening is, like, they're going to immediately put those defense up. Like, you don't know my life. Don't come, over right, here don't come over here telling me mm -hmm. to do this. Especially when people have a perception that your life is amazing and your life is great. You know what I mean? You have a healthy relationship. So they're going to be like, okay, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't come over here with that nonsense. So I think if we come from a place of just compassion, non-judgmental, more often than not, the people around us are like, okay, like, she ain't coming at me like that. I'm coming from you like, I genuinely care about you. I care about your life. I care about everything that's happening with you. So I just want to make sure you're okay. 
And I think that's what happens is that people forget that and they think that they're coming. You come in for me. And when I deal with do is all love, I want to, like, make you feel good as a man. Like, you know, I want to make you feel love. Like, you don't ever got to scream. I dealt with dudes that they don't even believe I'm the person I am on social media because that's how calm I am. So for me to deal with a dude like him, it's kind of scary to me. I'm like, damn, is he going to hit me or kill me or whatever? So does that mean you're not paying attention to the red flags? That's the red flag. Just pointed totally. Right. And so I think, like, the piece of it that we have to, like, kind of get is that we definitely want to show compassion, right, and everything, all that, but we don't want to set up the situation where the person goes from one toxic situation to another toxic situation and then on, and the cycle just keeps going and going and, and going. going. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, how do we kind of, like, get past that? I'm saying, I my thing with that is I, I feel like when you're in a situation where you feel like you're my friend, yeah. you're in this great relationship, right, right. and I'm here with this man that is, you know, today he's treating me so good, mm -hmm. and it's going to be so good tomorrow, too, because, <laughs> you know, I'm going to make sure I don't do anything to, you know, oh, uh, Jesus, trigger I him. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's like, you know, you know, you're doing good, but now I have to think about, you're telling me, oh, you know, you got to get out of this. But I have to think about it. You got a man at home. Facts. And now I... Leave this man, and I'm gonna be home by myself. Mm, and now yeah. I'm gonna be all by myself. And who it, knows if the next man I get mm, is gonna be worse than this than one. That. And this is gonna be, and I'm just gonna go through the thing. So that's where getting helps comes. Getting help comes in. Facts. And the like, thing is that see, see that I. This is one thing I will never tell. I never. I know a lot of of my friends who have you know issues in the relationship. I will never tell someone to leave their man. Like, I, my go-to is go get some help, go see a counselor. You guys need to see a counselor and work it out. Right. I would never tell someone to leave their man. I would mm -hmm. tell you, listen, you need to leave him. These are the resources. I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to be your friend. You can call me. And I can understand if I have a significant other, he would understand that if this is my friend, right, right. I'm going to be there for them regardless of what the time. There is nothing worth my friend. I'd rather console you and have some sleepless nights because you calling me in the middle of the night because you want to talk because you're all lonely. Right. Yeah, while I'm, I'm here with my man. I'm going to console you. I'm going to console you. I'm going to As opposed to you. death because there's nothing worth your life. Burying you. Yeah, it's like yeah, I'd rather... there isn't, but you don't understand. That person is not going to leave. Whatever you tell the person, okay, leave, 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 they're not going to leave. I don't believe that. They, I don't. They're gonna, I think they're going to realize it eventually that right, the situation right. that they're in is toxic. And maybe it's going to take longer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that is not overnight. You're not going to realize overnight that this situation might be the death of you. Okay? So it's going to take time. So I just think that you need to provide, like, the right type of support to anyone there yeah i mean yeah i you mean don't I definitely have, i would offer the support if, if if we're friends and we're family but if we were <laughs> like and like i know you care about me i know you love me i know you so you'll be like this i know you're not gonna tell me anything messed up i know you're not gonna tell me anything wrong but if you tell me marie this is not a good situation. So can we, can we talk about the man in the whole situation, too? Because I think or that we're partner. missing that. Or a significant other partner, partner. whoever. Talk about partners. So let's say partners. this, let's say a man, because we're talking about, because it could be a woman, too. It could be a, too. Could be it a could woman. Be a woman. Yeah. So let's say you have a conversation with that person, because I am sure that it's not healthy for him either. And the thing is that, God forbid, you commit a, a crime, and now you're going to be going to jail for the rest of your life. Real quick. That's one. Hold on. It, well, let's go back to trauma bonding real quick. Okay. The other piece of it, right? So there's two things in terms that happens with trauma bonding. It's cyclical, which means you have patterns of beautiful love. They take care of you. You're the love of my life. You're my soulmate. And then you have the abuse period and whatever that looks like. And then there's the power differential. The power differential means like, obviously, whether it's perceived, whether it's real, one person believes they have a power over you. It doesn't have to be based in reality, but the fact that they believe they have power over you, to me, trickles into narcissism. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to speak to somebody who's a narcissist. Like, they don't actually believe that anything they're doing is wrong. Is wrong. Yeah. Like, I believe 
Like, is when they're saying, I love you, you're the love of my life, I'm running game on you because you don't know better. You don't know better. I'm I'm gonna tell you like, you know, you the love of my life. Like, I can't believe I did that. Da 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 da. They're running game on you. Mm -hmm. R really, because they know this is what I gotta do to get you to chill out. Yes. Now you're gonna chill out, do what you gotta do until you piss me off. And I gotta put you back in check. Because essentially that's really what happens. So it's game. So it's not like you talking to someone logical and say, dude, when you do that, like when you did that, like that hurt my feeling. I can't believe you did that. And he'd be like, oh my God, I hurt your feelings? My bad, I didn't know I did that. Cool, never repeat that behavior again. No, it's like, oh, oh, cool, cool, cool. She don't know what she's talking about, shut the hell up. In his mind, but he's not gonna tell you that. He's running game on you, so it's very difficult to speak to someone who actually does not take into account what you actually feel, which is why it's cyclical, which me, which is me, I, it's guaranteed it's going to happen again. And that's the problem that happens in trauma bonding is because you can almost guarantee it's gonna happen again. Because let me just say this, because I think I'm a tough ass individual. And my thing is, you are going to let some people get away with some stuff because I would never let no man come to me and be like, hey, I'll, I'll do whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's how I felt right. my whole life. But then there comes this guy and, oh, my God, there's one thing. Look at me. I'm yeah. Like, there's one thing okay. that is like it just gets you. And, like, it's the same thing. You allow whoever you want to get away with whatever you want. I disagree. No, I do, it's the same thing with love. I think that you find your person, right? Mm -hmm. And we've had this conversation. You've had, you find this guy. He has all good things, but then there's one thing that you don't like. And it's like, if you really feel like you really like that person, you might possibly love them or whatever, you're gonna let them get away with that one thing that's that you don't like. That's okay, not, not getting love. away, and that's Okay, not getting away, but it's not love. It's, I, okay, hold up, hold love. up, hold up. Can we, can we talk about it real quick? Like, I think, again, again, based, going back to what you said, it's, I guess, in how you define love. And yes. I guess if you define love different, it's, that don't resonate with me. That specifically doesn't resonate with me. Right. Okay. So that might resonate with you or Mimi. I don't know. Like it, it all depends on how you resonate. Like, so let's say your husband shoes with his mouth open. Okay. That's something that you're willing to go past. Like you, you're willing to just let that go because your love for him is so much no, that I mean, you're willing we, to let that go. We're gonna work on that. Hey, no. Love, no, girl, you're gonna that has nothing to do with love, bro. Has, Marie. But this is my thing. Or maybe I see it because I guess I'm not in love yet. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Because to me, it's like, oh you know, I date people, and if I see that something that I don't like in somebody, like, I'm not going to continue talking to you. That's not love. Okay, it's not mm. love yet, but it's going to get there. I pr Dude. It's going to take these steps in order for me to get to love right, you. Right, I agree. Like, I, I understand what you're saying. And it could be simple things, and it could be anything. Let's say, me, for me, it's different because I'm just dating. You're married, so I don't know. But for me, right now, in order for me to get to the point where I love someone, mm -hmm. there's certain things that have to happen. I have to be able to look past certain things because I'm just like, you know, I'm so used to things going one way. Right. Now I'm like, I'm looking at things different. Okay, I'm not going to stop talking to you because you're chewing with your mouth open. I'm going to have to work. Oh we're going to have God. to work on that. I think, like, I th for me, I don't want to go deeper than rap, but... <laughs> <laughs> Like, you need to detach from the ego real quick, and that's the problem. See, the thing is, you're very much attached to, like, the like your ego and, like, stuff like that. And that has nothing to do with love. Okay, so give us the definition of what love is to you. For me, like, one of the, for me, one of the things, you guys, I'm a big reader. Like, I love this definition in terms of, like, love is the search for the divine on earth. And I don't want to go deep. Go deep. <laughs> no, I want to know because I, I thought love was what I said. Like, for me, <laughs> like, love isn't a feeling. It's, it, it's like an energy that you can't put into words. You see what I'm saying? So it's a selfless, 
um, experience that you have. Like the love I feel for my husband is not in relation to me. I don't love him in relation to me. I don't love him because of how he makes me feel. He makes me happy, so I love him. No, I love him in his own entity, in his own existence. And it's it's not even being poetic. Like even without me, but you no, are. but it's but not. I promise you it's not. Like even without me, Alan, even if he poetic. weren't with me, I would want like the best for him. And when I say the best, I want the best for him, even separated from me. Like when I look at people that I love, I look at their existence outside of me. It's not in relation to me. Like when I tell you that I love you, that means like, like even if I never speak to you again, I want you to prosper and be beautiful and like get everything you want. Most people yeah. think about love in relation to me. And so it's like, how do I feel? How do I feel about the way like this person exists? So you are existing over here doing your thing. Oh my God, I love him. Uh, he makes me feel good. He makes me orgasm every time. Uh, <laughs> right? No, I don't think that's No, I'm not talking that's about that. But love. I, like Marie, I get what you're saying. Like I, I, I think I have felt that love, you know. Most people for, feel that love for their children. Yeah, no, I've, I've had friendships that have ended that I still feel like, yo, I still, I love you as a person, mm -hmm. like, for yourself, and I hope that you're doing good in your life and whatever you're doing over right, there. Right, 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 right. You know, like, I have felt like that, but that's going to be hard to find somebody that I feel like that about. No, that's not true. These niggas out here doing the most. Well, girl, I don't know. <laughs> Been out the game for a minute, so I don't want to speak on it. However, I feel like it's still possible for you to find that where you find that person. You, and to me, Lonnie is the one who always tells me I'm looking for my person. person. Lonnie is the only, like, I, you know who told me that first person? Lonnie's like, I'm looking for my person. And I, was like, I am. I was like, but what's the this thing is that I think that it's so hard. And let's, let's what talk is about, your person? Let's no, talk she always tells me my person. My person is my, like you said, I want my person. It, I just think that when you find your person, you just know it's somebody that just goes like this and it just happens. And it's like, there's no, like, all this, like, when it goes like this and a finger goes like this, <laughs> that's not your person. But when it just goes like this and it smooths and it just happens, that's your, because I think that it, that's like love, that's what love is supposed to be. I think that love is supposed to be like seamless and so organic. It you is. know what I'm saying? And I think that those things that I would usually look for in a person, I'm going to overlook. No, but I don't think that's, like, I feel like the love piece of it is true. You're absolutely right. It is, like, cosmic, and it is, like, yes. boom. Mm -hmm. However, real life happens. happens. I understand. And I think, like, I think, like we, we, we are connected to the real world. And so, like, I think, like, for me, on a spiritual realm and a spiritual level, yes, you meet your person, it's like, boom. And then back to earth, we got bills and everything yes, else going yes. on. And so you're going to be like, what are you doing? So you, you, I understand, but it shouldn't that. be like that. It should be like, okay, let's put our heads together and make this But you got to know how to communicate. I understand. Right. So it's a process. Once you find your person, all these different components mm -hmm. are going to be just, everything is going to come together seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And that, okay. I, I think, it don't. I don't it doesn't know. come maybe seamlessly. Maybe you ain't weak. You're older. But, like, I know when I first met Alan, we were young. Like, the yeah, first we're... day I slept with him, like, <laughs> I, I felt like we were like this for instant. I didn't want to leave. She zing. <laughs> she zing with him. She was like this. Like, Yo, you okay. was like this. We this, together. We together. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't want to leave. Like, I never wanted to leave. I never wanted to leave his house. Like, he will... I was know, married but now. But that's what he'll, I mean. He'll, he'll, he'll send that's me what home. I mean. Yeah, I I'll agree. Come, like, I'll walk right back. Like, yeah. But that's what cab. I mean. But that's what I I'll say when right it's, back. like, seamless. Like, she felt the connection. And I understand that you're going to have bumps. Like, let's say you hear, and then, you know, it's like, ooh, I'm trying, you know, it's not. Right, right, You're right. going to have things that are going to happen, but it's like you're always going to feel like no matter what, we're going to work through this. It's going to, you know what I'm I saying? know, I think but that's, that's I, my person. I, okay, look, I don't want to speak on it because I don't know. Like, I wasn't as, you mean, Mimi and Alan was like, what, like, yeah, we're like young. 16, That's what I'm 17. saying. I think like, it's I met like Jean different. when I was like 20, right? And I think, like, when you, the younger you are, 
I this is the thing for me, I feel, is my theory. The younger you are, the more open you are. Yes. Right. And so still, I was very sheltered. I was 20. I was open. But even, at, was being, even at being 16 <laughs> and being 20, I feel like when you get to grow with your person, yeah, it's you beautiful. get to grow it's and it's beautiful. totally different than now you have. Now I have, I'm grown. But to me, I don't feel that does not mean you don't get your person. No, See, I didn't no, say that doesn't. I wouldn't. I'm sure that no. my person is out there somewhere, but I just think that the process is going to be different because I'm not. Hey guys, I am Lonnie. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. See you next week.